What is going on guys? My name is Arbuckle. Welcome back to another video. Today I want to share with you guys the best solo strategy for the Black Ops 3 Zombies map, The Giant. Uh, I'm going to be showing you guys the strategy that people used to use back in the day on the original map, Darice, uh, to make it to around 1000 plus. And uh, yeah, that's true. You can Google it and people were actually able to accomplish that. Unfortunately, I do not have that kind of time, so we're probably going to only go to about around 40 so I can at least show you what the strat is. Um, but we're going to mix it up a little bit. We're not going to do the exact same strategy because this game is a little bit different than the original version considering the zombies are a lot smarter. They spawn uh, in the areas that you're headed towards so they will predict where you're going. It's not like you can just spawn them in one location and run across the map and they're going to follow you. So you do have to be really, really extra careful when it comes to playing on this map. But not only this map but all Black Ops 3 Zombies maps. Uh, but yeah, let's get into it. So the first part of the strategy is what you're watching right now. That is the catwalk strategy is to camp on the catwalk. And this is what people used to do all the time back in the day is just to sit on the catwalk and see how long you can survive. Uh, and that's what you're going to do for about the first 35 to 40 rounds. If you're really, really smart and very good at conserving ammo and, and you're really, really lucky when it comes to getting max ammos, uh, you might be able to make it past round 40 just camping on the catwalk, which is pretty awesome. Uh, but you're going to need the weapons that I'm about to share with you. Uh, and yeah, so the first about 34, 33 rounds are going to be really, really, really easy when you sit on the catwalk. Now the weapons that you need are going to be the Draken uh, and the Dingo, and you're going to need to upgrade both of these. Now a lot of people are going to think, well, you know, I need Mule Kick. If I'm going to sit on a catwalk, I'm going to need three guns, I'm going to need a lot of ammo. But the truth is, when it comes to the Draken, it's it's absolutely unstoppable. It's a one it's a one shot headshot until round like 40 something. So it's just it's really really good. The Dingo's got so much ammo and it takes them, it, it guns them down really easy uh, as well. Um, and like I said, the first 32, 33, 34 rounds are really, really simple. If you do this strategy, if you sit on the catwalk with an upgraded dragon and an upgraded dingo, you will survive for a really long time and you'll get lots of max ammos. Uh, now, but once you get around 35, 36, 37, then it starts getting a little more difficult. You start getting to situations where you have to pull out that dingo and you're running really, really low on ammo before you're able to get that next max ammo. Um, if you do come across a situation where you do need to get out of there, you don't have enough ammo, easiest thing to do is either throw a monkey ahead of time, or if it's literally last second, then you need to just jump down and try to get into that teleporter and get back to the spawn so you can restart kind of a, uh, a route. So you can just kind of find something else to do. You can find a gun on the wall or maybe hit the box if you're running past one. Um, but the catwalk strategy is the best way to go for about the first 35 to 40 rounds. This is where it gets really, really interesting. This is the next part of the strategy. Now, what you want to do is you want to start out the rounds on top of the bridge, okay, with the little bridge where you go toward the power. And you want to sit there. Now, if it's the middle of a round, if you get trapped and you have to use that teleporter, you can do it at the exact same time. But your goal is to make it to the bridge to the point where you can drop down onto the ground and run towards uh, the catwalk. What you want to do is you want to sit up there on that bridge and you want to wait until the zombies are about to hit you. Which, what you're basically doing is you're getting all the zombies to spawn right there in that location. And when you jump down, you're not leaving the entire area. You're still in the area, you're just on a lower level, so the zombies aren't going to despawn. They're all going to stay there, and they're all going to follow you. They're going to jump down. So what you want to do is you want to zigzag back and forth, because if you run too far away, then they are going to despawn, and then you're going to really have to deal with some trouble. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to jump down as soon as they're about to hit you, and you want to kind of run this zigzag formation, if you, as you've seen me do. Um, and there's multiple, multiple things that you can do here. Now, what I would recommend, what I originally would advise you guys to do is to run a zigzag all the way back to the teleporter room, turn around, shoot as many as you can, try to kill them all if possible, uh, and then hit that teleporter, go back up, and redo that strat again. It's really, really simple. The only downfall is if you kill all the zombies and you hit that teleporter instantly, all those zombies are going to spawn near the original spawn on the map because they're all dead. There's nowhere else for them to go except to follow you. Uh, so, you do really have to be careful if you're going to do that. As soon as you spawn on that original mainframe, you have to take off and get back up there. You're going to get trapped in that uh, original spawn area. Um, one thing that I've really liked doing recently is when I run that zigzag, instead of running back to the teleporter room, by the time I get to that door, I turn around and I run around and I kind of just start hoarding them up right there in that little area where the trap is. And, uh, and you can actually get away with that for really, really high rounds if you're really cautious when killing your zombies. Now, obviously, if you kill every single zombie at the same time, it's going to make it really, really difficult because they're going to come from every direction. What I like to do is to try to kill about half of them, um, maybe like one shot with a Wonder Waffle or maybe two shots with a Wonder Waffle, depending on how high of a round you're on. 
um, and then kind of just kill a couple of them so that you don't really have to worry about getting trapped when they spawn again and, and come from every direction. Uh, so basically what you can do is you can start up on the bridge, jump down, hoard them up, make an easy circle, and then casually pick them off a couple at a time and you won't have to worry about getting trapped. There's also that trap right there which makes it really, really easy is if you're about to get trapped and you want to hit that trap, if you have Juggernaut, you can run right through it, no problem. Uh, and that'll really help you out. The only problem is if you get stuck on one side of it when it comes on and you've already run through it, uh, you can't go back through it or you're going to end up going down. Um, the last thing that you can do is you can zigzag all the way back to the teleporter room and instead of taking the teleporter you can hoard them up in there. I know that some people are really really good at that. It is a small area, it is fairly easy to get trapped unless you're amazing at zombies, but if you guys want to attempt that, uh, go right for it. It works pretty well if you're, if you're good and you're smart. Um, one thing, one last thing that I want to advise you guys is to test out these three different strategies. I mean, I guess it's one big strategy, but the areas in which you can run, you can either take the teleporter, you can hoard them up in the room in front of the catwalk, or you can hoard them up in the catwalk room. There's really three different things you can do. Um, always use that teleporter as an escape route, but... Uh, what I would do if I were you guys is I would test the strategy or this part of the strategy out at like round 12, like around 10 where you're not really worried about dying um, before you make it into those high rounds. That way you can figure out what you're best at. Like for example, if you start a game and you go down, it, it's only a couple rounds in, it's not a big deal. But if you're around like 50 something and you, and you realize that you're not good at this strategy or this part of the strategy that I was giving you, for example, uh, and that you think you might be better at the other one, I mean, shoot, you just went 50 rounds. So you might as well start early, try all three of these out, see which one you're best at, and then stick to that one. Um, but yeah, um, I guess one more tip that I could give you guys is there's a gobble gum that spawns max ammos. If you want to get that gobble gum, put it on and try to get it while you're camping on the catwalk. It will help you last a little bit longer up there. What I tend to like to do is to stay on that catwalk as long as possible because there's more of a chance that I'll go down running zombies in circles. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see all you guys in the next video. Pimps in the crib, mom. Oh.